Welcome to SVG TV News for Tuesday, May 31st, 2016. I am Jennifer Richardson with the details. Persons being sworn in under the Oath by Officials Act will no longer pledge allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth and her heirs, but the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. This act was passed in Parliament today as Prime Minister Dr. Rav Gonsalves outlined that constitutional provisions can be made to enact these changes. Dr. Gonsalves pointed out that most who have officials swear allegiance to their people have been carried out in other places, such as Jamaica. Although Her Majesty is the head of state, it doesn't necessarily follow that you have to swear the allegiance to her. The statute, there's no constitutional provision to that effect in our constitution. Parliament has made the law and Parliament can change the votes by officials act. And there are countries like Jamaica, for instance, which, is, which has, Jamaica has, and so too other countries that have Her Majesty as our sovereign lady, and they do not swear allegiance to her or indeed swear in respect of the oath for the execution of office. The Prime Minister further made it clear the move was not aimed at disrespecting the Queen but is consistent with the change in times by giving primary obligation to the people. But rather than swearing allegiance to an individual, we swear allegiance to St. Vincent and the Grenadines and to the Constitution and to discharge responsibilities impartially and in the execution of our office rather than to well and truly serve Her Majesty that we well and truly serve the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Of course, I do not expect that in serving the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines we will not be serving Her Majesty. And, but it is just what is the where we sense our primary obligation is and that is that is what it is about minister of economic planning camilla gonzalez also reiterated the importance of pledging allegiance to the people of this country instead of her majesty the queen gonzalez pointed out that the amendment is not a rejection of throne but a pronouncement of autonomy it is a profound declaration of our national sovereignty, of our deepening political independence, and our continued growth as a nation. It is an amendment, Mr. Speaker, that is not a rejection of anything or anyone, but rather an affirmation of our faith in God, of our faith in the Constitution of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, of faith in ourselves, and of the fact that our primary obligation as representatives in this Honorable House is to the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Adhering to pleas made by church elders of the Pentecostal Assembly of the West Indies, Prime Minister Dr. Rav Gansav says that he will not be hasty in the execution of the bill to deduct salaries from parliamentarians who have been absent over a period of time. Dr. Gansav told Parliament today that he was visited by the church leaders some three weeks ago, and while they were not opposed to the content of the bill, they however requested it not move as expeditiously. Furthermore, the Prime Minister says the bill has been published and he has not gotten any response from lawyers or other interested parties. That is to say the mischief of people who appeared to come to Parliament, not coming to Parliament. And they understood the, rights, the righteous indignation of the population towards such conduct. But they have requested of me, and I have transmitted that request to the Cabinet, that Perhaps we do not move in the current situation 
with the bill in an expeditious manner. Again, I reiterate, it didn't have anything to do with the lack of any merit of the bill, because the bill is very meritorious. So, we have decided to accept the advice, and we will make haste slowly on it. Meantime, Minister of Economic Planning Camilla Gonzalez expressed displeasure that the opposition team was not present in Parliament today for the sixth straight month, despite being paid. They have been paid six times over six months and not done any work. I don't know if the students who are here today feel that they could stay out of school for six months and still get a pass mark in their class. Um, but I point it out as I have pledged to do uh, whenever I rise to debate. Mr. Speaker, of course, given recent events, um, not because there is an envelope on the desks of the senators for the opposition, it means that the pay package is deposited into their account, because I understand there is some debate as to whether or not senatorial pay packages actually reach the senators in question. The children of Kanawan government schools share the same ideal as other children in the nation, thus deserve the right to obtain quality education in a safe, healthy and comfortable environment. That's according to the president of the Kanawan government school PTA, Samantha Farrell, in a letter addressed to the Ministry of Education dated May 28, 2016, expressing the PTA's dissatisfaction at the current conditions at the school, including the structural damage. Farrell noted that while they remain fearful of the damage to the building, there are other issues that exist such as insufficient portable water, su water supply and unsightly bathrooms, which they believe could have contributed to the outbreak of ringworm and scabies at the school. She noted that there remains no communication between the school's principal or the Ministry of Education and the PTA in relation to the problems, even after the building was assessed by consultants, engineers and other ministry officials. Farrell outlined that following a visit and statement by the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Teachers Union, the PTA has become more aware and is convinced the building is indeed unsafe. She says the PTA has since hosted a meeting where the decision was taken to keep the children away from the school until the matters are properly addressed. They are also calling for a meeting with the Ministry of Education officials, SVG, TU representatives and engineers by Wednesday, the 1st June 2016 to address their concerns as well as alternative locations for classes until the structural situation is remedied. Farrell further points out that it is the hope of the PTA for the ministry to adhere to their concerns and address the matter immediately so that the students can obtain the quality education that is vital to their survival in a safe environment. The Sam family of Leyu is mourning the death of one of their own, Benedict Sam. The family received the dreaded news in the early morning hours today that their son and uncle were shot and killed in New York City. Sam, who migrated to New York years ago, is said to have been self-employed operating a taxi service. When SVG TV News visited the home of the grieving relatives, they explained that they have very little information on what occurred, but from their understanding, he was returning home from a function when he was shot. Father come like around four o'clock this morning and he said um you know he just got the news that Benny just passed. I'm like, okay, why? What is it? And he said Benny was shot. So he was shot outside, which is literally like downstairs from where they live. My father lived he parked the car in front where my father lived and he was walking back probably to his apartment. It was like around two in the morning and um that's it. They just someone just walk up to him and shoot him. According to Sam Christopher, her uncle was a jovial person and was not one to be involved in any bad behavior as he was heavily involved in the church and that he was planning to visit them here in SVG next year. Mama was just talking about him on Saturday where he was supposed, he said he's coming home next year to visit. So Mama was 
anticipating waiting to see Benny next year. You know, he and his family would have come. So, you know, so to get this, it's, sh it's shocking. Benny was doing gang. It's not like he's the type of guy who have attitude or anything. Just straight up smooth. The distraught mother of the deceased, Vernie Sam, told us she spoke to her son just recently and cannot believe he's dead. She says her son, though living overseas, was popular in the Leo community and that she holds him very dear to her heart. What time did you get the call this morning that you received news of him? When, when I get the call, it's my daughter and my granddaughter and the boy Jim. When I see them come, car they never come down so early. I said, something happened. They tell me no. And afterward, they sit down and we're talking and they break the conversation to me. No, he speak to me all right. He speak to me all right. And he sent something for me. He does always call me. He does always call me. Sam's death is under investigation by the New York City Police. Aimed at enhancing the prof professional development of persons involved in the criminal justice system here, a forensic pathology training seminar was held here on Saturday at the Trinity School of Medicine in collaboration with the SVG Medical and Bar Associations. Outlining some of the aims of the seminar, President of the SVG Medical Association, Dr. Rosalind Ambrose, expressed hope in having a continuation of similar training seminars, which will enable professionals to develop their skills in an ever-changing system. Forensic pathology, which is about how is evidence uh, formulated and how evidence is presented to the court. Expose practitioners, both medical and legal and criminal justice practitioners, on what the court really wants to know when they formulate reports that will come into evidence in criminal justice cases. And we anticipate that uh, practitioners on both sides will have a better understanding of the construct and what is necessary for performing care and forward these cases to the court. Thank all the practitioners who have come out to attend it and uh, see it as a necessary educational exercise for our professional advancement. President of the SVG Bar Association, René Batiste, noted that the seminar provides an essential step as the court system continues to modernize. She further added that the training will aid in better decisions being made in court. So the, the lawyers and those persons who are involved like police detectives and prosecutors need to be on board and the purpose of this is to give exposure, further exposure and so that you can't just rely on having gotten your degree and you've been going to court every day. There are going to be changes and this is part of that new, new thrust towards the changes and reformation in the, the um, jurisprudence and the jurisdiction dealing with criminal justice. The Stubbs Government School last Friday held a successful career fair. Principal of the school, Andrew John, and two of his teachers emphasized the importance of giving their students a sense of direction in terms of their future career goals and encourage parents to give their children the necessary encouragement and support. When the idea of this um, career they came up, I, it came at a kind of time when some of our children are involved in, well, their parents and some of their relatives, in a lot of violence and so on. And I thought it would be a good idea to invite some of our professionals to come in and chat with the people, have a little rapport, because the people they are in contact with every day actually are the, the people on the street. Well, it helped to reinforce his workers and uh, career and help the children to choose properly the careers as they grow up. So they'll be able, when they leave school, they'll be able to go directly, focus directly into that particular career that they have chosen. Well, you would see different careers being portrayed and the parents, we should give congratulations to them because they went all out to make sure their children are well dressed. Former Raga and Calypso monarch Chanel Scorpion Williams and Samantha Lynch of the Ministry of Tourism, Sports and Culture were on hand to speak to the students and encourage them to think outside the box when decided on a career choice. I mean, most of the time people hear sports, they think that, oh, that's being an athlete. And I'm not interested in being an athlete. I can't run, I can't do all those things. However, what they need to recognize is that 
if you cannot be an athlete, there's so many different career paths that you can take. You can actually, every athlete need a cadre of persons to work with them. They need to get psychologists, doctors, lawyers, accountants, farmers, because all these different profession, all these different persons are very vital to, a, to an athlete's development. So that was basically my role here today, to encourage them to take up sports from different avenues. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm honored, you know, as an artist, to know that we are part of that career. Um, activities and I mean and we are we are looked upon uh, you know as, as um, persons who are also important in society not just the doctors and the nurses entertainment is a big part of, of our makeup you know I mean especially in semis and Grandines who we are now getting there on that international level and um, you know it is a good look for us as I said so that people can know respect us what we're doing we're talking about artists carpenters everybody else you know i mean this this is where you can make a living from you know what i'm saying it's not necessarily as i said the, the so-called elite jobs which is doctors and we need to change that mindset or that stigma you know what i'm saying speaking to our news team a number of the children gave unique reasons as to what inspired their choice of uniform for the career day i want to be a black squad because i need to lock up people who don't behave themselves i help them too I dress as a policeman. I want to dress like my daddy. I dress a uh, uh, vinyl walker to walk up vinyl to this kind of light. I can, I can help deal with major crimes. Carnival Beat is coming right up. Welcome to Carnival Beat. We're just days to go before the staging of the much anticipated Miss SVG 2016 pageant. Our news team caught up with two more of the contestants in a practice session. Nolisha Miller tells us more about Miss Jurgen Janetta Richards and Miss Lotto Zena Lewis in this report. Miss Lotto Janetta Richards, who received news today that she was successful on her final examination said that she was inspired to enter the pageant to showcase the versatility and the talent which this country's nurses boast. Richards, who considers herself a spoiled child as she is the only daughter, confessed preparations for the pageant took a toll on her initially as she found it difficult to juggle work for school and the pageant. Nevertheless, the aspiring nurse tells us that being a part of the prestigious show has boosted her confidence. I have changed a little because though I was confident in myself, I must say my confidence level has been boosted due to the fact that we are exposed, exposed to the public a lot. And we face with criticism and myself recently I encountered that and it has made me stronger. It has given me a drive where I need to succeed. While she does not consider herself the life of the party, the Miss Jurgens recipient said she definitely knows how to have a good time with her fellow counterparts. Jovial as she is, Richard stated there are some things she will not miss after the pageant. The exercising, I'm not a person who exercises regularly. So it was a difficult task readjusting myself, not only physically but mentally. And I always have to be prepared whenever I come to this session. Okay, I am going to work out. I have to put a little more emphasis in whatever I do. And that aspect, I think, was the most difficult. And I would say I wouldn't miss it when it's over. <laughs> And describing herself as a fun-loving, vivacious individual, Miss Lotto Zena Lewis had quite a laugh with us in her pretty heels and dress as she told us she was once a tomboy. I was the clocks wearing, John wearing, jeans wearing. Lewis said being a contestant in this year's pageant has tapped into that hidden ladylike persona so that she can portray poise and elegance on the night of the show which she has mastered over the past six months. She too said her self-confidence has been boosted as a result of her involvement in the pageant. The Barley resident said she has enjoyed a lot over the months and has learned how to remain grounded and humble. 
Lewis admitted that though it was difficult initially, she learned how to adapt to the demands of the rigorous pageant trainings and her job. I am currently employed at the Bukumens Bay Resort and I work from 6 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon and it was extremely exhausting coming from work and to be here for training, for fitness training especially and Sean's session. Sean, you are excellent at what you do, but he was brutal. <laughs> At a media conference today, chairperson of the CDC's Beauty Shows Committee, Cheryl Rodriguez, promises that Saturday night's show will be an electrifying one. Nolisha Miller, Carnival Beats. The Adrenaline Mass Band is gearing up for a successful 2016 season with its presentation, How Dare You? SVG Television's Bavin Oliver has more on the presentation in this report. Giving Vincentians an alternative to the traditional mass is the driving force behind the Adrenaline Mass Band. And for 2016, their presentation, How Dare You, seeks to do just that. Band manager Dennis Ashton says her band has had a good feedback from the public over the years, and they are all about having a good presentation. Because most of the bands out there are the traditional bands. With, but if the other bands would look into it, they would realize what the market is calling for. You see what I'm saying? So. When you see masqueraders coming on the road, after they've been judged, you see them discard most of the, the costume and they're down to, to the bare essentials. So we start with the bare essential and we make it really nice so nobody would want to throw it away. Ashton says masquerades playing with adrenaline will have the unique carnival experience inclusive of packages, an element which she says is lacking in the other mask bands. We're offering people packages, not just a costume. They offered breakfast, they offered lunch, they offered, you know, stuff like that. And when you come here, you were just getting, when I say here, I mean the bands in St. Vincent. Hardly, if any, maybe one band had an um, all-inclusive where they give you everything with your day. It's like a package. You come and they take care of you for the entire day. So it, St. Vincent was in dire need of something like that. Ashton, however, points out that since her mask band is not a traditional costume band, it is unlikely they would capture the coveted title of Band of the Year. As you can see, we are into more sexy, if I can say that, costume. And she's been in the market now for, this is our ninth year, and I've never seen non-traditional, as I would call it, placed, you know, in terms of close to being Band of the Year. For SVG Television Evening News, I am Marvin Oliver.